Hi everyone. I greet my friends from US, Germany. How are you? Are you fine? Are you feeling good because of God? My friends from Malawi, Muribonje, my friends from Zambia, Murishani Mukwai, and my friends from Zimbabwe, Magadi Bose, my friends from Kinshasa, Likasim, Lumbumbashe, Kinshasa, Bonjour, my friends from Uganda, Tanzania, Habari Zenu, and my friends from Kenya, Muko Vipi. Here comes Minister Miriam. I come to you with a scripture that bases my ministry. Because what am I today? It's something that is still in the scripture. So the word of God is not in vain. Always praise be to God. In the book of First Timothy chapter 1, verses 11 to 13, there is where you find that I, Mary Ann, I was counted a faithful person. God trust me and take me into his ministry. Then we go to the first Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 4. That's confirmed. That whatever I'm going to talk in this ministry, I am not there to please any man. I am not there to offend any person. But I am there to glorify God's doing. Because God has counted me and trusted me for his gospel. Praise be to God. And in the same, same area, I come to you with an example of what heaven looks like, what the kingdom of God looks like. In Matthew 25, verses 14, the kingdom of God looks like the servants that we are given five talents, the other one two talents, and the other one one talent. What am I trying to say? You can have as many talents according to how God has trusted you. And you can have one talent according to what God, how God has trusted you. In the book of Luke 16 chapter 10, it is says, if you can be faithful in little, you can also be faithful in much. If you can be unjust to little, you can be unjust in many. And my question is, how can you be trusted to be given your own if you are not trusted because of somebody's because of somebody else. So, today I have a message. Today I want us to talk. I always tell you guys, I'm not going to preach because they have preached since I was a baby. So now we know all the scriptures. If I start telling you about this and this, you know which scripture to find the story. So I am not here to preach, but I am here to stamp the words that you get in the scripture. The first Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 4. There are some people God trust for their gospel. And there are some people God find them faithful in their filthy life, in their dirty life, in their dirty action. And God choose them to carry what? and to deliver what he wants. You know, one thing amazes me 
is about my God, my Heavenly Father. It's somebody that you cannot imagine or come closer to the imagination of how he does things. Because his kingdom belongs to him and him alone. And he giveth whoever he wants. He bless whoever he wants. He uplift whoever he wants. And he uses whoever is ready to be used. I was thinking about God. How does God operate for real? Can God find you faithful to trust you for his gospel? Can God trust you for his gospel? Because I was looking, how could God, and the way God is so faithful, so holy, how could God allow his son Jesus to be born in the, la, in the blood group of prostitute, of a harrot. Do you know, I was just thinking, God, do you know your, your way of doing things amaze me? How could he allow a line with a prostitute bride line? Somebody might, might ask me how, how, how it happens. But it, 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 it is the, the, the same, it is the same God who used a harrot to hide the spies, to hide the prophet of God. Because God's ability to redeem our past and grace over our future exceeds our imagination. God's ability, God's ability to redeem our past and grace over our future exceeds our imaginations. Your imagination of what God can do with your life, with my life, is totally different with the imagination how God sees it be done. The same, same God made Ruth to be a grandparent of Jesus. You know Jezebel promoted the cult Baal in Israel and God was annoyed and God punished Israel with drought because of the Baal cult that came with Jezebel. And we see that Boaz born Rahab and Rahab was a harrod and married in the tribe of Moabites. And that's where we come to get Ruth, the grandparent of Jesus. It is not a good gen it is not a good generation that God Jesus Christ was born in. And it's not that there were no very clean, very faithful, very holy families that God could make sure Maria or Joseph is coming from that genealogy. So God always tried to make us know the way he works is exceeding our imagination. And that's why I come with this good news to you, to tell you God looks deep inside the heart. Because God, when he looked deep inside those Herod, 
the harrowed women, inside he find hospitality. Inside he find there was mercy. Inside he found there was patience. Inside he found there was faith. And inside of them he found there was repentance. So, you who concentrate to judge others, I want to talk to you today. Our God, imagination or our God's how he works, it exceeds our imagination. And what do I want to say? I have a very short story. I want to say it in a short moment. I was married very young and the marriage didn't work. I was too young for it and I didn't know how to handle it. So I quitted the marriage and I went to stay in a place. It's a well, it's a well known place, Yaya Center, that's the place I was working. And I stayed there as a single. I came across to a friend who used to stay in Lovington and she introduced me to go to out. You don't have to, to finish your work and go home. You need to go out, have fun, make friends. Uh, life doesn't, doesn't end there. There is another life. So I started... After job, I was hooking up with her. We go out, we go out. But for her, she was very decent woman. She used to put on skirt suit. She looks like an ear hostess. She was very smart. I never clicked in my mind she was a prostitute. So slowly by slowly, she got me into most prostitutes, they have very hospitality. They have mercy and they have faith in the kind of job they do. Because a prostitute will live and go out to hang out, to fetch for anyone who is going to deliver a bread for her. They are so patient because I remember the first time I went out with my friend, when she started introducing me into this business, uh, he bought me a bottle of drink. And the first thing, let me tell you how their, 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 their hospitality is. She trained me how to take this drink for five hours and it's not getting finished. It ha you pour half you leave half in the bottle and the other one is in the glass. So you'll be holding the glass. The drink touches the ribs. You put the glass down and you just enjoy the, the sweetness by far. And you can last with that drink five, six, ten hours. And everyone who walks in He'll see you have a drink. What am I saying? In my filthy walk, in my dirty action, God did not leave me alone. Because slowly by slowly, I stopped taking soft drink. She introduced me to wine. She introduced me to this drink called Redis. She introduced me back to Guinness. So I became a drunker. I told her, I don't like the Guinness because it's making my stomach big. So she introduced me to spirits. Smanov. My friend, I am not ashamed to tell you. I would take 700 ml gin and tonic daily. I would take two bottles from morning. I would start taking it. I'll be working, taking it. In the evening, I'll take another bottle. So I became a drunker. I became a 
hide and seek prostitutes because the moments we were going out he would introduce to this white man he would introduce to this what and i would see as if this is good money just five thousand a night it was worth it but whenever i was becoming drunk in a five-star hotel i'll start to preach i'll start to prophesy upon them and most of them the things that i used to tell them it came to pass what am i trying to say company the company you are in can also take you to the wrong directions that God has not planned for it. The anger and the bitterness in you can make you follow the wrong path. Because I was still bitter with God. I was a virgin when I got into my marriage, in my, into my first marriage. I was married a virgin girl. I kept myself well, but I entered in a very abusive marriage. That would be a topic of another day. What am I telling? I'm trying to tell you that God is using even the prostitute, even the harlots. God is using them today, provided he finds something in your heart. He finds you have a hospitality heart. You have mercy to others. You have faith of what you are doing and where you are going. You have faith to believe what you can see and what you cannot see. You have patience. Even if I pray to do it and it doesn't happen, you have patience to wait for the manifestation of God. And you have a heart. To repent. We are not angels that we sleep in heaven and we come down in the morning. A human being is to an era. So, do you have that heart of repentance in you? What am I trying to say? I have come with good news to you. That is... Having a broken heart. I have good news for who is in that condition that you feel so lonely, so ashamed of your sins. You are so ashamed of what you are going through right away. You are so ashamed of your filthy life. Fear not because our heavenly Father, our God the Father, Offer us and condition and condition love. He offer us rescue. He offer us restoration. He offer us renewal of strength. So I am here to tell you, this God can restore for you what was lost. He restored back my marriage. He restored back my happiness. He restored back my love. He have restored back my health. The word of God is always true. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse says 4. Whatever I am talking to you viewers all over. It's a true testimony that God delivered me from that state of prostitution. And he made me and he trusted me for his gospel. That's why I'm not ashamed to say I was once a prostitute. I was once a drunker. But today, I praise God. Today. I am a testimony of what God can do and what God can change. Are you there with a broken hearted? Are you there 
tied up? Are you there? Tired of what you've been doing? Are you there? Wondering where will my hope come from? Are you there stranded? There is God who can carry your burdens. There is someone who doesn't care where you're coming from or where you are or what you are doing or what, how, how people talk about you. There is a God who doesn't care how the society are talking about you right now. There is a God who doesn't matter how your, your friends or your family or your siblings or your children or your husband is talking about you right now. But he cares because he has counted you. He has trusted you. carry the gospel to others. If you are there, please send a text to me in plus two fifty two plus two five four seven zero four six one two five four six. Plus two fifty four seven zero four sixty one twenty five forty six plus two fifty four seven zero four six one two five four six. Send a text to me and I'm going to be there for you. May God bless you next. I'll be back to you.